Well, hello. My name is Ricardo Born. I'm a civil engineer and we work in BS Consulting, a company focused in geotechnical engineering. Just some brief words about this kind of analysis. We believe that soil structure interaction is a key point when dealing with high-rise structures and it's still a field that is evolving to more refined results. From the geotechnical viewpoint, the results of settlements, total and differential, the distribution of loads and bend moments in the piles, the interaction between the, the raft and the soil, which is the piled raft hypothesis, the interaction between the piles, which is the group effect, are very important topics that are only able to be achieved with some accuracy when using a 3D numeric modeling. So, along with a platform that enables this modeling, the soil properties might be modeled with the use of soil constitutive models. And Mindless GTS NX allows this analysis to be done with all those prerequisites. So, this case presents a soil structure interaction of a skyscraper in, in Brazil. Um, the presentation is basically divided in nine topics, starting with uh, a small intro, going to some building details, uh, then we go to soil characterization that was done in the site, um, we head then to the, the parallel testing program what, which was undertaken, and finally we go to the, the model. So we start with, with the structural model um, in Autodesk Revit, then we go to the structural model in MidasGen, and finally to the geotechnical model and the full model in Midas GTS and X. And we go to some results and some brief conclusions that we have about this, this job. So the building, which is the focus of the presentation, is a 55 story, about uh, 168 meters tall, designed in a later, later soil of low resistance. Um, because of the size of the building and the soil uh, found at the site, uh, soil, structure, soil structure interaction was necessary to evaluate the sediments and also to evaluate the behavior of the structure. The structural team, by this case, did not work with MidasGen and their platform did not export for Revit or for another, so it was impossible to directly import their model. So what we do is next was our team replicated the design structure with the very same geometry, very same loads, load cases used by the structural team. So this model was full created in Autodesk Revit. So with the uh, Revit MidasGen link, uh, the, my, the model was then exported to MidasGen and after applying some conditions on Gen, the model was finally exported to MidasGTS GTS and X where the full model was analyzed. So as I said, the building comprises a uh, 55 story uh, resulting in something close to 168 meters tall, being then one of the top 25 tallest buildings in Brazil today. The whole structure is designed in reinforced concrete, which is the most common type of structure here in Brazil. Uh, each story has an area of about 440 square meters. We have a total of 18 columns, which are actually structural walls because of the, its size, and a total estimated dead load of about 300 meganewtons. Uh, some other building details now about the, the foundation. It is a pile raft foundation with 106 CFA piles. Uh, CFA piles are the continuous flight over piles. So each one with um, a hundred centimeters of diameter and three, three, 30 meters long. 
well, the raft has an area of about 680 square meters and we can check this in, in the image in, in our left which is an aerial view, uh, a picture took from a drone um, so by this phase the pile was already done and what they were doing was excavating to then execute the raft now we head to the soil characterization so by this site we had um, five standard penetration tests going um, something close to 50 meter deep and also for piezo cone tests which reached depths close to uh, 40, 43 meters so this site is located in the southern Brazilian coast um, so its profile compromises layers of sand and clay due, due to the characteristics of its uh, sedimentary deposit with the results of the piezocon test we can see uh, the excess of pore water pressure starting for, from a depth of close to 14 meters and this gives us import, important information and also we like to to say that in this region the use of con penetration tests to estimate pyroload capacity became something usual by the last years mostly due to the quality of the test compared to the to the standard penetration test on the next slide i'll show you some results of, of biocapacity prediction based on con penetration test so here we are heading um, to the bioload testing program uh, the static bioloads just to define it is composed by a real scale pile which is tested by applying loads and by the same time the settlements are recorded for each load step and the figure in the right shows the test scheme which is basically composed by the test pile and the test and the reaction piles. So a program of pile load testing was undertaken which included three continuous flight auger piles tested to a maximum load of close to 9 meganewtons. The static load tests were undertaken prior to the foundation construction which allowed a, a better understanding of the behavior of these piles um, the results of the pile of tests were compared to the values um, obtained by historical approaches using um, methods based on SPT and CPT, so standard penetration tests and cone penetration tests, as can be seen in the load settlement curve. So there is a difference between them and the provision of the behavior of the pile based on the cone penetration test method shows values much closer for those measured by the load test which this result is mostly explained because of the nature of the test which is let's say much more technological than the standard penetration test and inside Midas uh, GTS and X the results from the bio load test were used to define the properties of the bio as will be shown later so it's, it's very important to have pile load tests when designing a, a building foundation and especially tall buildings so let me show you a little bit more about the pile loading testing program these are some pictures of the, the test so the figure shows the pile load scheme composed by uh, you can see that the hydraulic jack which applies the load and that reacts against the reaction frame in this case we had uh, four reaction piles to resist the, the forces uh, also uh, an important equipment is the load cell which, which allows us to which allows the loads to be to be read with more accuracy well, the geotechnical designer in the case ourself, ourselves um, started uh, with the design of the pile load test so we defined the type of pile the diameter, the length, the maximum testing loads, and, uh, and also the, the reaction system. So we followed up the, the execution of the test and 
later interpreting the, the results. Well, now heading to the uh, structural model, it all started in Autodesk Revit. In this case, um, the structural team, uh, as I said, did not work with MyDesGen and their platform did not allow to export to Revit or to export to some kind of file that could be imported by MyDesGen. So our team replicated the design structure with the very same loads and load cases used by the structure team and this model was full created in Autodesk Revit. Um, all the materials, sections, properties, the analytical model and loads were applied directly on Revit. I'll show you a, a bit of the Revit interface now. So this is uh, Autodesk Revit 2017, and we have the our, our full model of our building here. You can see we have all the the geometry, and actually you can, I think you can see the 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 arrows which are the applied load. And uh, the thing is, we wanna wanna take this model, which now is in Autodesk Revit. You wanna export it to MyDesGen. So the function, which is a link that needs to be installed in our computer. So if you go install it, and you go to Addings in Revit, then you go to External Tools. We have this option to send model to MyDesGen. And you open, you just choose the name you are going to save it here. And here you can choose the element size, which is basically the, the size of the mesh that you, you are exporting. By this case, we have meshes in our slabs and also in our structural walls. So we can choose and we have more finer or more coarser elements. Uh, also, you can choose the units and just click send and it will save the MGT file. I'm not sure it's saving it now because it, it takes a, a bit of time. So let's head back to four points. So this is already the view of the model um, imported to MyDesign, including all the geometric information, sections, materials and properties. I'll show you a bit in, in my design interface. So this is just a blank new file where we go to menu and we go to import my design MGT file which was exported by Revit. Let's choose this one that I've saved before. Just take a little bit of time to open up As you can see, the message it was imported with zero error and zero warning, which is good. Sometimes you you may get some some errors. So I'll just take a, a closer view for you to follow up. You can see the mesh. We could have chosen an option to get it uh, finer, so the mesh should be finer. Um, and we also show here in the menu what was imported. If you see, he already says here the number of stories. So we just need to configure to to the information to to talk in the same language. Let's say with MyDigen. Um We have the the material they were imported. So we have the material from the concrete that we have predefined there in Revit. You also have other section, predefined section that was all defined in Revit. We have also this information about thickness, which in, is because of the slabs and the structural walls. We have some boundary conditions, some elastic links, and some bin and re releases, which are also defined in Revit. 
and lastly we have the loads by this case we have just uh, applied the dead load case but we can we also may apply others and we let left to apply live loads and wind loads directly on my little chain so let's head back to powerpoint So inside MySysGen, some conditions were applied as confirming the story information, the, some initial boundary conditions, and the wind loads that, uh, by this case, the wind loads were derived from wind tunnel results, so were simply implied in MySysGen. Um, the model was then analyzed to check for inconsistencies, and comparing the reactions obtained, obtained by the structural team on their platform and those obtained by us on MidasGen, the difference was smaller than 5%, which we've considered a very good approach. Um, along with the structural team, the behavior of the model were approved and then exported to Midas GTS to start the foundation iteration process. So let's head back to, to MidasGen and I want to show how to export. So we have the, the full model here of the structure and we want to export this to open in, in Midas GTS. So we go to menu, export and we choose here um, MXC file for, for GTS. You just save it and lately you, we can open in Midas GTS. Head back to the presentation. Well, uh, going now to the geotechnical model, which is inside of Midas GTS NX, the soil mesh created is a square, uh, 100 meter by each side, with 50 meters of depth. Layers were created based on the type of soil and resistance. For this case, we have created seven different layers. Um, for sense, the failure criteria used was the more coolant in which the, the results of soil investigation may provide a good provision of values of friction angle. And for clays, the constitutive model used was the modified cam clay model. Um, this model is, more, is a more complex one with some properties that are not defined very easily. So based on um, other soil investigation campaigns that we have in the local area that also uh, have laboratory testing, we have knowledge of behavior publicly from these deposits. So since there are some doubts about uh, the behavior of clays, we have decided to make two different models using two different approaches. One from from what we we believe that from what we believe that the parameters really are, and another one from a more conservative perspective. So the, the results will show different situations. Uh, so what, what we expect is that the real result is being a point between these two approaches. So we need to understand that we have some soil investigation, soil investigation limitation. So we decided to work in, with this situation. So about the, the pile raft, the raft we have uh, 3.5 meters thick raft uh, mesh as a solid element and the material which is concrete was considered uh, spurly elastic. Um, along with the raft we have 106 piles which were meshed as line to solid interface. Let me, let me show you the model in my the GTS NX. So let's check it out for first the, the model itself. We have all the, the soil layers, but let me show you first the, the raft and the piles. So all the 106 piles and the 3.5 meters thick raft. So let's go back to PowerPoint. Uh, for the the pile model type, we, there are some 
some ways to work with piles in numerical models. And the best way would be to consider all piles as solids and define the, the interface properties and simulate its behavior. Well, the problem is that the model became become way too heavy to compute. So a solution that also can be done in MIDAS, GTS, and X is to consider the pile as an element beam type, so converting a line to a beam and creating an interface to simulate its behavior. So besides it's not the, the best solution uh, numerically speaking, it still offers uh, good results when calibrated. So the model is, is equal to the soil, which is composed by a solid mesh, plus the piles, which are lines converted to beams, and interface lines to solid. So let me show you the, the piles actually are just lines that are converted to a beam, so they have a cross-section and also they have properties of a pile, so we can specify what is the their behavior. So trying to, to obtain better values, we are, we've, we've done a parallel test calibration. So inside Midas ETS and X, we've created the infinite element model to calibrate the low sediment behavior. So the geometry of the pile was reproduced, different low steps were defined, and the pile parameters were changed through trial and error, let's say, attempts. So that's it, a, a, what we call a class C prediction, where parameters are changed, looking for convergence with measured values. Um, the load sediment cure presented shows the pile load test results along with the finite element model created. Um, the values obtained seems to, to fit well to what was measured. And this, so th this kind of model might be tricky because it might need many attempts, but we really believe that this is the way to go. You have a better information, a better model if you, if you go if you go this way. So um, some numerical models of building foundations are made um, uh, only by applying a load or pressure by the base of the columns. It is like re retrieving the load values from, for each column from the structural team and applying it directly to the model. This might so uh, neglect the redistribution of loads in the superstructure and its stiffness or rigidity, as you wish. So those results then um, might deviate from the real behavior of the structure, showing uh, higher values of differential settlements. So looking to our model, we've tried to create a full model, which is the soil plus the pile raft plus the structure. And as was said, it, it is understood that differential settlements behavior seems to be closer than when using our other kind of models. Another uh, advantage is to be able to evaluate different load cases directly and also wind loads in other type of type of loads. So let me show you the the complete model here. We have the the pile raft. Now we have the, the building, the superstructure, and all the soil layers, all the seven soil layers that we've created by this case. Um, now heading to the first results, we have selected here the results of settlements. Um, the, the preliminary analysis tries to satisfy the maximum sediment criteria defined previously for the, the whole structure. And besides the absolute sediment values, um, an analysis of differential sediment is done and also calculating the angular distortion, which 
tends to be uh, more important. Um, as stated before, as this model is working with the whole superstructure attached to the foundation, the results of settlements and especially the differential settlements tends to be more real due to the stiffness and rigidity of the superstructure. Well, let's take a look at the results in Midas GTS. Let's see only the files so in the results displacements we can check the values of, of settlement in each pile. We can also select each pile node by its top and export these values of settlement. And here in the presentation we have called uh, uh, the settlement as delta. Um, here in the next slide, I'm showing the results of, of pile loads and, and the distribution of load along the pile. So it's important to note that piles located in different spots along the raft tend to have different loads acting. And this can be evaluated through this analysis using uh, the values of loads obtained to each pile and dividing by the settlement found for each pile so we can calculate springs. Those springs are different for each pile and this might be understood by us and by our colleagues, our structural colleagues. Uh, the reason of this is, is mainly because of the position of the pile inside the raft which can be affected by a location of a column we may understand these as more or less loaded region or due to pile group effects which tend to decrease the performance of the pile meaning that some may not offer the same reaction as others so the generator springs for each pile may be sent to the structural team or simply exported back to Mydagen um, the very same thing can, can be done for area springs uh, this is for the consideration of a pyrorep hypothesis. So the values of pressures um, above the raft might be divided by the settlement obtained in the same point. So this, this also might be sent to a structural team or exported to, to Midas Gen. So taking a look in the results of axial forces in our piles as the same I've, I've said before about extracting those values we can extract the, the value of each, each pile so these values can be copied from Midasgen and pasted to, to a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel so there we can calculate the, the spring and easily um, send to a structural colleague. Another um, set of results um, retrieved also from the from the GTS and X shows up the values um, obtained for bending moments in the piles. So th th these values are particularly uh, important to define the structure design of these piles as these piles are uh, continual flight over piles. The reinforcement cage length is, is very important to be defined as there is the difficulty to insert reinforcement when lengths are uh, over 12 or 18 meters. So special procedures might be required as a special concrete and also vibrators attached to the cage. So these results might be particularly important when dealing with wind load cases, which this this case can may imply higher values in this situation. So let me show you the, the results of bending moment in the piles. 
we can check that the baby moments in the pilots in some side of the ref are much higher than from those by the pilots in the middle. So this in information are very due to be retrieved through a modeling like this. Well some for some conclusions we we considered that we had a success, successful interaction between Revit, MidasGen, and Midas GTS NX. Um, the key results from Midas GTS that we have analyzed are firstly the settlements of the PileRef Foundation, which might be inside the range of the tolerable settlements for this kind of structure. Um, for interaction with the structural team, springs can be created either for each pile and also as area springs which are the contact of the ref with the soil so this kind of information might be retrieved from the software selecting the correct nodes and exporting the values of loads and settlements so dividing load per settlement we have a spring so in the case of area spring we might export the pressure and settlements and just divide um, pressure per sediment, then we get an area spring. Um, we have done this through Microsoft Excel, just copying the values from Midas GTS and pasting to, to Excel. Uh, normally, an interaction between the two technical and structural teams are done by several iterations, starting with a set of loads sent by the structural, which results in a set of springs calculated by the geotechnical. Convergence uh, between both models are then seek, and uh, sometimes several iterations are, ne are needed for that. By the time a uh, full model is established using the same platform, the number of iterations needed to converge are reduced. So we really believe that this is a good way to go. So as a, a final thought, uh, Professor Barate, which was an old foundation engineering expert in Brazil, he would say uh, simply like this, we need to measure, and which means that for every effort that we are trying to do to evolve with uh, complex models, we still need to measure the real behavior of the structure. And in this particular case, every column of this building will be monitored for vertical displacement since the constructions of the very first story. Uh, this is to make sure that we are heading in the right way. Another thought is that we may, may have reached it to an, an excellent numerical model, but it, it, really, it really relies on the information that we input in it. So having some quality soil investigation to retrieve reliable parameters from the soil is crucial. And also having instrumented bio load test is crucial. So the results of our model all depends on the quality of this, this information. Uh, I'd like to make some acknowledgements to Mr. Uh, Luis Fernando Salles, to Mr. Renan Cordeiro, and to Mr. Marcos dos Santos, which are all part of our team and participated in this project. I'd like also to thank Midas for the invitation, especially Mr. Angel Martinez and Mr. Ray and uh, everyone for, for watching. Thank you very much.